All right, welcome Hi. back. Well, it's time for us to talk nutrition this morning. But before we get into the nutrition segment, Abby, this weekend's uh, Homo War <laughs> things, you know, did you enjoy any of the quick play? No, you did because, this, yeah. well, for two ah. reasons. One, we were busy with the literacy challenge yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But where I come from, boom. Mm. We actually the last. It's not yet time, We're the right? last. Ah. So, I mean, Tell I'll go bats. home when it's time like no, I do no, every no, year. For no, people. don't say you go home. We will go home. Why are you inviting yeah. yourself? <laughs> like, because <laughs> mommy is watching. <laughs> <laughs> so. Good morning, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I had some this weekend. Oh, man. Yeah. Pick, pick is oh, a, no, it's a different kind level. kind of experience. And then yesterday, I, I, came to, I went to roast the, you see, the day after... People hey. uh, roast the tea no, in the frying pan. Who taught pan. you this? Uh, it's just, just say, who uh, taught mm, you this? Roast the tea on the Look, frying pan and then Charlie I just... suspect that Kuku <coughs> has a gang girlfriend and he's not telling us about <coughs> it. That's <coughs> what I suspect. David has a gang girlfriend and nah in his life <coughs> and he's not telling us about it. So mm. nah, whoever you are, wherever you are, mm. good morning to you, madam. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time for us to talk nutrition this morning. Edna Kosia Kunedi Yadova has joined us on the set. We're going to be talking nutrition and postpartum depression. What kind of foods do you need to help lift up yourself? Akosia. Good morning, Akosia. Good, good morning. How morning. are you? I'm awesome. Fantastic. Good. We're good. We're good. We're good. It's good to have you here. Always a pleasure. Yeah. So talk to us about uh, the, the role of nutrition um, in this mm. challenging phase mm. of a lot of women's lives, you know. Yeah. Um, postpartum depression mm. is, uh, is something I see on a daily basis mm. because you go on world rounds and you expect a mother who was desperately looking for a child to lift your babies and breastfeed yeah. and sometimes you see them sleeping with their back to the to baby and yes i i had a, a client like that she was just crying and the husband knelt down was begging her mm. to just breastfeed this child and she was like leave me alone i'm i'm becoming depressed but the way she was just crying i i didn't even touch it mm. because i had to the, the, the husband was a doctor <laughs> oh wow! Unfortunately, and so when we stepped out, it, it's very interesting. No matter how much you get used to it, when it is you, mm. when it's even if your husband is the best su surgeon up your coat and it's you um, on the bed, mm. he forgets that he w he is a surgery, a surgeon. Sorry, and so it happens where certain things will let you know that this mother is going through challenge A, challenge B, challenge C. You ask, is this your first child? Yes. But then she's not so happy mm. to have a child. Sometimes you, you probe further and you realize that she probably had episiotomy. Mm. She had major tears. A doctor friend of mine, she delivered and I went to her and she couldn't walk. She was just holding staffs. I was like, ah, Jess, what's going on? And it was like, I had episiotomy and mm. she had three tears. Wow. So you can imagine the trauma she was going through. Mm. And so picking the child to breastfeed, it's like you've put me through hell. Yeah. Why, Just, do, I why do I have to do this? So mm. it happens mm. one out of eight women. That's mm. very high. Yes. Very common. It happens one out of eight women. So um, one of even when we're doing this um, half year review um, meeting conference was that every postnatal labor NICU ward should have a psychologist. Mm. Because sometimes you go in and this baby is under the blue light. You need to make sure we have breast milk. Because at that point, that is where colostrum happens. And that's where the depression can be so high. Mm. And so that child is deprived. That, um, that thing that you can't have it back. Mm. If this child misses it, happy, you can't give it to your next child. Mm. Uh, or say that because you were denied. So now okay. that baby Paul mm. is in or uh, mm. Chrissy is count in, for some. count for some. You yeah. can't do it. And yeah. so once I'm denied that, you've denied me of something that will run with me for the rest of my life. Mm. So one out of eight women go through that. Mm. And nutrition has everything to do with it. There are mm. some mothers who are even depressed when they are pregnant. And so it starts from there. Because wow. they can't eat. You have pregnant women ha having hyper-emesis gravidarum where sometimes they throw up so much that they can throw up blood. And so when you have a mother like that, for that woman, as soon as she sees food, some of them, they feel bad when they see food. They don't even, want to, they don't even want to look at anything. I had one woman last week like this, simple water. 
is a problem. And I go like, there are people, including myself, we have even drinking water, uh, drinking of water being an issue. Yeah. So, I'm one watch, of those people. <laughs> so, yes, people are petty. Mm. And I'm petty in the positive sense, where indirectly I smell whatever I'm, I'm, I'm putting here. Mm. And I think you maybe want to. Yes. Because <laughs> you, you, they, there are people, they can tell you how even water, this one yeah, smells. Yeah, yeah. smells. And so, when it gets closer there and they sense or smell something funny about about it mm. they don't want to take it so we flavor their water for them okay. by sometimes using simple mint or lemon juice or lime juice just okay. to give it that um fresh mm. um smell for yeah. them to be able to keep it so if you have somebody who has gone through all this and now baby is out and i had to go through emergency cs which can be very difficult there are times in my lab coat i just fold my hands and it's like i forget who i am and mm. i'm just standing there praying for like the person because it's at, it's at a place where i i don't know what else i can yeah, do yeah. and so when it happens like that you have to make sure that you are staying off sweet foods so processed foods they have the chance of making sure that you get more stressed out mm. Mm. So avoid sweets, avoid processed foods. Try to do a, a lot of the lean foods. I'm sure as the conversation builds up, we'll, we'll go largely into that. But then a majority of whatever happens has to do with the fact that there are people who are stressed up and so want to avoid, let's say, I'm on a regular day, I would see a Pioko and I would want us to hang out. I would want to do certain things with her. But all of a sudden, it's like, Api, let's do, like, I keep making excuses for it. You should know that this person is at a point where she may not even see it. And the funny thing is that we have men experiencing it. Mm. Mm. Because, wow. yes, there are men who cry at the labor ward when they see what the mm. women go through. Yeah. And, 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 and it's like they never thought that was what their mom had to go through bringing them um, okay. out into this world. And so you have men sometimes also experiencing some of these symptoms where they, 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 there is a change in appetite. It's either they have a bigger appetite or they have a smaller appetite. Mm -hmm. They feel stressed. And sometimes you can see it when baby wake up. If your husband is fond of going like, <laughs> wake up and go and breastfeed, the baby is crying. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you can to make sure you put the baby to sleep. It means that he's being stressed out. And then they, they have a lot going on in your, on your mind. So it's like, how am I going to make sure this baby um, um, turns out mm -hmm. to be a kweku, a pyoko, a kusia? How do I... That, mm -hmm. that can be a lot, especially for men who are really, really into their children and mm -hmm. so it affects them sometimes also based on the fact that they see what the woman is going through mm -hmm. you have men sometimes coming and making sure that they are the one even talking to you the nutritionist then the wives are quiet because they're not for name but the breast yeah. milk is not coming yeah. and i don't want to give formula what do we do you can see the 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 the, the, anxiety. the, the anxiety in the men so whatever mm -hmm. the women feel sometimes the men feel them but then diaz is triggered mostly or a good number of times by, by what they are seeing the baby or mm, the woman go, go through, through. Yeah. and there are some signs for also uh, mothers but then there is something we call baby blues mm. Mm. it happens in most new mothers and sometimes their mothers let's say uh, I call you had let's say your 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 last born is let's say seven and now you you are a mother again it's like it's mm, been it's seven gone. years yeah. apart and sometimes you meet women and their first child is me and they are now having another mm. child so it's like it's a whole process and it's it will be very challenging for them because they had me probably as a teenager mm. but now in their 50s they are becoming a mother again and then a whole hormonal change and hormonal imbalancing a lot of things complications yeah. probably setting in can also contribute to them being at that zone mm. so having a child with a medical condition a lot of things can contribute to it and so you can have women who also don't want to have anything to do with their, 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 mm. their baby sometimes some are even taking away mm. their grandmothers are taking care of them because the mother has been through a lot and doesn't want to have anything yeah. to do with the child are, are there foods that um, women should avoid to, yes. in order to um, help them not to go into, into postpartum yeah. so there are foods you can make sure you stay away from processed foods yeah. this even during pregnancy yes okay. and it's very important because when you see the nutritionist she she makes sure she starts even from there by telling you to avoid it mm. you see uh, in nutrition and health it's interesting whatever is causing a 
can be a, a factor for B, C, D, up to even a Z. Mm. And so when you are pregnant, at that point, some of these things, they become inhibitors okay. for the absorption of iron mm. and folate to make sure you have a normal hemoglobin. Okay. Then once you deliver and you are indulging in those things, they easily stress you out because the funny thing is that, happy. let's be honest with ourselves, when you do the show, imagine the time you had to come here. And afterwards, you'd have to be involved in meetings and what, what Your have you. Your brain is tired. Mm. Your brain feels tired. And so when you enter the reception, the first thing you may do is to get cook. Yes. Or true. get something with direct sugar to, to make sure yeah. you, you, you are revitalized. You and yeah. so indulging in some of these things is what will make sure you are affected in, mm. in, 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 that, in that sense. And so make sure that you go for fresh stuffs. Any mother who is doing a lot of fruits and vegetables, you'll be supplied with your daily need of riboflavin is one critical nutrient for women. Mm. And we have example of riboflavin foods, avocado, mm. excellent for it. Broccoli, if you can't afford broccoli and you can, you can get dandelion, <laughs> if you just walk into this house in Ghana, you don't just buy dandelion. Just go and, and tell the it. woman, oh, grandma, <laughs> me pay a bonto or dandelion. And you'll yeah. be allowed to even read everything off. And then we have the... Um, salmon, liver, also being an example of riboflavin, uh, rich foods. And then vitamin B2, rich foods. Mm. X, X runs everywhere. They yeah. are very powerful. And you can have nice omelettes made out of it because mm. then you are pumping vegetables into the eggs. And so it's like a combo pack mm. to make sure you have, let's say, a healthy or normal breakfast to make sure you are helped. And then we have a typical plate as to how if you have postpartum depression, mm. even if you don't have it and you want to help yourself because it can run with some women until their six weeks is done. Mm. Ideally, after six weeks, your body is supposed to return to, to where it, it was. Yeah. But then one year, you see, you still the see still, women with that. Yeah. But then there are things to do because after six weeks, it says believe that you are healed. And so once you can start having sex with your partner, if it's SVD, CS, some do it earlier. Even mm. SVD, there are some who do it earlier. Mm. Uh -huh. And so if you've got into that stage, it is believed that at least there are some um, healings that should have um, properly taken place and mm. so it is easier for you to get over there but then it runs with some people even after six weeks and that one can be serious because mm. that psychosis that is dangerous and you may really need to make sure help mm. comes to you so the plate has to make sure you have the balanced diet typical okay. kind of thing you have your fruits so we have the a postpartum depression plate representation where you have a bit of animal protein, you have a bit of the pulses, nuts and seeds, you have a bit of the um, fruits and vegetables, obviously vegetables may come in, and then for the leguminous family. So you should make sure you have a plate where some of these examples are deliberately incorporated mm. in mm. there to make sure that you are giving your body a lot of these nutrients. There are 11 nutrients, and I, I know we don't have time. Yeah. So you <laughs> have to make sure, I'll try and post it on my social media handles. Make sure that you have some, all that mm. to make sure you are helped. Okay. So last question, how do you know you have postpartum? Of course, you need to be assessed and diagnosed, yeah. but... What are some of the early symptoms so that you know you need help? So when you have baby blues, and baby blues, can, can you can't take it to be postpartum depression. And that one, you, you feel sad. Mm. Because it's like, ah, I feel like I would want to go to the saloon and have my, my hair turn into red or pink. Mm. Koku would want to go to the bar, bar mm. but then mm. you leave this child for five minutes and this child is crying. <laughs> okay. And so Apioko says, please, I want to sleep, Koku. Make sure you, you babysit this baby. And so it's like the baby comes to yeah. kind of disturb you mm. a bit. Mm. And that can make some of these parents sad. And then sleeplessness, obviously, mm. comes with it because they want to feed, especially at night and at dawn. And so don't mistake baby blues for um, depression and then anxiety mm. and then crying mm. so for the baby it, it can be that and then we have the symptoms for the mother so difficulty in bonding with the baby you realize that like i said how can you sleep as a mother and turn your back to a child you just had this child is going to be suckling for two years mm. and so you need to make sure you bond with this child and then restlessness we have panic attacks okay. and then you really being severely anxious 
and then being overwhelmed it's like oh all of a sudden this is just too much for me even changing diapers some some others forget and it's yeah. like they are picking their bags they are picking the babies all together <laughs> when they come sometimes i have to pick their bags and escort them because it's like they are packing they are picking yeah. everything at a, at a go and you go like what is happening with this mother some yeah. of them come and i had a woman she's now a friend <clears throat> crying because she was starving the child she didn't know so always make sure you get closer to one i'm, I'm curious this is just by the way but is it more likely uh, for a woman to go through postpartum depression if her, the father of the child is not involved. It's important. It's one of it. Thank you so much. It is one of the reasons why women get depressed. And most of the people come into the facility who are mentally depressed. There are some people you sometimes have to even give them something because it's like this child is not doing well. And they sit down, and when they begin, I go like, hey, there are times I'm crying, but then I'll mm. have to go and clean my tears mm. and come and sit down mm. and just pour yourself out into somebody. Because men, the fathers, are just not there. Mm. And if you had a child who has been in the incubator, and sometimes you, you, you meet them and you want to help them even express, and they go like, oh, Uknuwa, is your mm. husband here? Mm. Go like, no. There is a client, she said, yeah. forget about it. Wow. <laughs> wow. How can people get in touch with you? So on Instagram, at The Nutritionist Akosia, mm. Facebook, LinkedIn, Nutritionist Akosia. You can WhatsApp me on this 0243-350206. There is a clinical psychologist at my facility okay. who can help you if you are going through this. I'll gladly refer you to mm. him. So I'll post this too on my social media handles. Perfect. Nutritionist Akosia, yeah. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, The Nutritionist Akosia, and WhatsApp 0243 350206. Wonderful. Right. Akosia, Fantastic. thank you so much. Always, it's always a, pleasure a pleasure to have you. It's always a pleasure. All right. Well, uh, we are going to enjoy some more music from RC. RC, take it away. Mm -hmm.